When it comes to debating their religious beliefs, theists act more like immature children than rational adults. Why is that? We're getting close to the end of this series presented by Evidential University about how to debate atheists. And so far, the advice that has been given has been universally terrible, and I'm afraid it isn't going to get any better this time out, because the religious have no idea what will actually convince atheists, and the good pastor here doesn't care. He figures if you throw out some empty platitudes and unsupportable claims, and the atheist doesn't immediately buy into it, you can just safely run away, because it simply won't do to have the atheist asking difficult questions that the religious might have to think about. So, here we go again, showing why the religious fail so utterly miserably against atheism. When you debate with the atheist brigade, or atheist, Never, never, never say that I'm going to prove God. Because once they said they were proof, proof is a mathematical concept. To him or her, prove me 2 plus 2 is 4. In other words, don't pretend that you have any rational reason to believe the things that you do, because we all know that you don't. You should, but you don't. So when you make these ridiculous claims about your imaginary friend, how do you expect to be taken seriously when you can't back up anything that you have to say? This is a massive problem that these people simply refuse to recognize. So once you say, I'm going to prove God, right? He's thinking about, you know, you're going to take him to a laboratory somewhere, right? And then do some experiment and boom, God appears. No, I don't expect that necessarily. It would be nice. But you have to have something more than, I believe blindly in my imaginary friend, and that's all I can do. Because if you can't give me any good reason, any credible reason, any intellectually valid reason why you believe in this thing, if you want me to believe in it, if you want to convince me that it's true, you have to do more than that. And if you can't, then the debate is over and you lost. No. Say, I'm going to show you the reason. I'm going to show you the evidence to show that there is God. And when are you going to do any of that? Because you can make all of those empty claims that you want. None of that is going to convince me because I don't care what you claim. I care what you can prove. And we all know you can't prove a damn thing. Well, you can prove that your standards of proof are pathetically awful, that your reasons are all fallacious, and that your evidence is laughably non-existent. You can't be that terrible at this and expect to be respected at all. You just can't. In this way, you are staying on the same level of discussion. No, you're not. Not even close. Debating a theist is like having a debate with a six-year-old going, I know you are, but what am I? You need to come up to our intellectual level because we're not going to go down to yours. You're the ones making the silly claims. We have every right to demand that you back them up. When do you think you're going to get around to that? But why don't you say, I'm going to prove. In his mind, he's thinking about biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics. No. Yes. Objective proof, not empty claims, not unsubstantiated arguments, not emotion, proof. And that's what you need to pony up before any of us are going to take you seriously. And here's the reality, pal, whether you like it or not. If you can't provide any credible reasons to believe these things, then you have no business whatsoever believing it yourself. I don't care how it makes you feel. I care if you can justify your position with intellectual, objectively testable, evidentially credible reasons, and when you admit that you can't, you just make yourself look like an idiot. Is that what you want? Because that's what you're doing. God as is. Says who? 
How do you know? Where is your evidence? What led you to that conclusion? Because those are all questions that you have no worthwhile answers to. Just because you wish it was true doesn't make it true. This is where the religious start to look like complete asses because they don't care if they're right. They care if they feel good. They care if they can get comfort from entirely unsupported beliefs. And then they rationalize their way into believing that they shouldn't demand proof for the things that they believe because it gets downright difficult to prove that this imaginary friend of theirs is real in any way or has any of the arbitrary characteristics they've assigned to it. And when we point out how ridiculous that is, they act like we're the crazy ones. Newsflash for you, Tinkerbell. We're not. And there are so many ways that you can show that God exists. Name one. Just one. Go ahead. Because lots of theists claim that, but they're really, really bad at backing it up. So go ahead, Pastor. Let's see your proof. St. Augustine. That's not proof. That's a bunch of irrational arguments that have been completely dismantled. Try again. Answer. Again, claims. Not evidence. Not proof. Claims that have been done away with centuries ago. Aquina. Likewise, nothing there. You don't actually know what proof is, do you? Professor Platinga who is a complete joke, just like every single other religious apologist out there. Dr. Craig, all that's have read the same tactics and I give of ATS all year long and all over, all, all over the world in many, many, many times. So, in reality, you've got nothing but your emotional desires for any of this to be true. Because, guess what? Philosophical arguments don't prove anything. You cannot philosophize anything into existence. It's either real or it's not. And real things can be proven to be real. Let me know when you can prove that it's real. Otherwise, I've got no reason to take you seriously at all. So your job is not to prove from God. Yes, it is. If you are claiming that God is real, it is absolutely your job to prove it, and that's a job that every single one of you religious zealots have entirely failed to do. So long as you're claiming that this imaginary father figure in the sky is real, so long as you're telling others that you're right, the burden of proof rests entirely and solely on your shoulders and no one else's. So you have two, well, maybe three choices. Either back up your claims with actual objective evidence, shut the hell up and stop bothering us with your stupid fantasies, or look like a complete moron and laughing stock. It's your call. Your job is to use the evidence that you have learned and show, based on this, I believe, God do as this. Then get on with the evidence, because what you're presenting isn't actually evidence. It just proves that you're pathetically gullible and don't care about reality. Again, three choices, pick one. And if he doesn't believe what he said, he shake hands and go away. You've done your job. Well, if your job is making a laughing stock of yourself and your rationality, yes, you've done your job. Otherwise, you've got a lot of work to do. Very simple, not too complicated. That's what the delusional always say. But reality doesn't work that way. Actually demonstrating things are real takes a lot of work. Sure, if all you care about is what's inside your tiny little addled mind, then you can pretend that it's real and rationalize away all the opposition, and it isn't that difficult. Maybe you ought to try being better than that. Time for watching again. I am Kodak Sede Manti for Evidential University. Please subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you next time. See you. You know, this is getting harder and harder to sit through because this guy is, I don't want to say stupid, but he's like so many other apologists, ignoring the massive problems with his own theology in favor of emotionally comforting but ultimately intellectually empty platitudes. And like just about every other apologist out there, he's only preaching to the choir. 
He isn't having a debate with atheists, at least not that I've seen. He's just telling the religious how to do it without proving he has any valid experience of his own. But he's only too happy to explain that the religious don't have to have any evidence, they don't have to have any valid reasoning, and if they get in over their heads, which they invariably will, then they can just walk away, having failed completely in their mission to convert the heathens and not feel bad about it. But there's a problem here. Matthew 28 says, go and make disciples of all men. It doesn't say, eh, I tried, and give up. But that's really where so many of the apologists I look at fail, because they've got nothing worthwhile to say. They pretend they do. They pretend they have evidence and logic and reason. But when it comes right down to it, all they have is emotion. Their claims fail miserably against the non-religious who pretty much always know a lot more about the religion and about reality itself than the religious do. But hey, people like the good pastor here are making a buck off the credulous so they have to protect their investment. They have to spin a narrative that keeps the believers believing and throwing money into the collection plate. Whether it's good advice... That doesn't seem to matter, because reality simply isn't part of the religious playbook, and caring about what's factually true, who cares so long as it feels good? And whether they like it or not, that's tremendously sad.